D. Listen to part of a lecture in an entomology class. Today, class, we are going to be taking a look at the insect known as a white ant. Actually, a white ant isn't an ant at all, but a termite, and in our case, we will be focusing specifically on the subterranean form. These termites are called white ants because, for the most part, they resemble ants, although they are more closely related to cockroaches. Now, before we look at their genetic makeup, let's talk about the living systems of these termites. White ants live in colonies and work in a highly organized units. Within each colony, there is a king and a queen termite, soldiers, swarmers or alates, nymphs, and thousands of worker termites. White ants are mainly found in parts of Australia and can cause considerable damage to timber, homes, and commercial buildings because they feed on cellulose, which is a form of plant tissue. These little creatures require contact with soil and with moisture, so they tend to make their nests in the ground, which stand out as visible mounds, or sometimes they build their nest in a damp and rotting tree. They have soft bodies and are relatively small, roughly half the size of a matchstick. It is only the worker white ants that can digest the cellulose due to a certain bacteria in their gut. Therefore, the workers are also responsible for feeding the other white ants by partly digesting the cellulose and then regurgitating it for the other ants. Imagine having to regurgitate your food to feed your brothers and sisters. It is also the responsibility of the worker ants to maintain the nest, to make subterranean tunnels from the nest to nearby food sources, to gather and distribute food, to groom themselves and all other white ants, and to care for the young nymphs until they are adults. Now, compared to the worker white ant, the queen white ant has a much lazier lifestyle. Her sole responsibility is to lay eggs. She can live for more than 25 years, every day laying up to 2,000 eggs, which are then tended to by the worker ants. Along with the worker white ants and queen ant, there are soldier white ants, which look slightly different from their worker counterparts, with an orange-coloured head and pinches to crush their enemies. Some of the soldier white ants even have a pointed nose, which emits a sticky substance that helps to hold their prey. It is the job of the soldier termites to protect the nest and all the other termites from other invading insects. The final type of white ant found in a colony is called a swarmer, or elates. These white ants have wings and become the future king and queen termites of different colonies, as they are equipped with reproductive organs. Once a colony is well established, the swarmers fly in groups of thousands, land, shed their wings, and attract a mate by emitting chemical pheromones. It is the sight of these swarmers flying in large groups that signal that a white ant colony is well established. If this is the case in a house, the owners should call an exterminator as soon as possible. In their relationship with human beings, white ants cause considerable damage to homeowners and business owners in Australia. Millions of dollars are spent each year trying to keep these little timber eaters from causing too much damage, especially structural damage. Professionals instruct people that if they find a white ant nest, they should refrain from disturbing it. White ants have very keen survival instincts and, if their colony is disturbed, they are likely to move on and cause further damage to a different part of the tree or building. If a white ant nest is found in rural or non-residential areas, the best thing to do is to stay away from it. If the colony is found in a residential or business area, the best thing to do is to contact a professional exterminator. 1. What is another name for swarmer white ants? Two, why must worker white ants feed all the other white ants? Three, what can be inferred from the lecture?